Harvest Radio is on the air. You have tuned in to the Mark Harrington Show, sponsored by Created Equal. Mark is training a new generation of leaders to take on the culture of death and win. You don't like abortion, don't have one. The only thing that can be said to be objective truth is that there is no objective truth. It does come out in one week. It comes out in one week. I would argue that we certainly are not all created equal. And now, here's Mark. Have you ever been trashed by somebody publicly? Have you ever been criticized on Facebook or, or elsewhere? And when that happens, how does that make you feel towards that person? Well, yours truly, your radio activist, Mark Harrington, is commonly trash in the media from pro-abortion advocates. And honestly, I'm used to that. That doesn't bother me one bit. But sometimes I'm also criticized and trashed from my so-called friends. And that's happened a lot lately. And over the years that I've been doing this, unfortunately, it just seems like pro-lifers just can't get along. And it's time that we do so. So here's the question I have. Why would someone like myself, who's been on the receiving end of some of the harshest criticisms by one of the leaders in this, or, uh, this, this movement, Abby Johnson, be willing to, one, see her movie, and two, endorse her movie? Why, why would I want to do that after all she's put us through? Beyond that, why would I, or any other person that's been, mal- been maligned for using abortion victim photography and for exposing abortionists and clinic workers and the enablers of abortion, like the medical waste companies, criticized for that, why would I want to endorse a movie uh, the, about the person who's done that to me? Well, here's why. Because I'm able to set aside all those personal issues for the greater good, and that is seeing minds changed and hearts changed on abortion, and to support pro-life films that don't sugarcoat the awful truth of abortion. And that's what I believe Unplanned does. The movie that was just released last Friday uh, nationally in 1,000 theaters across America, the long-anticipated story of Abby Johnson, Unplanned, was released to the public last Friday, and yours truly, along with some of my family and others, went and saw the movie. And, you know, it took me a while to overcome my own little personal issues here and think about it until my wife said, well, would you rather her not produce a video like this or a movie like this? And of course, I would rather her produce a video. And I'm also able to set aside personal issues with people. I mean, think about this. Remember Lying Ted? Remember Ted Cruz being (laughs) criticized by Donald Trump on the stage of the debates in 2016? Remember that? You would have thought that the the things that Donald Trump said about Ted Cruz and his family, you would have thought Ted Cruz would never have anything to do with that guy. But what did he do? He turned around and endorsed him for president. He buried the hatchet. Why? Why? Because he wanted Donald Trump to become president of the United States. That that overrode over, you know, that 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 was more important to him than the personal attacks that Donald Trump levied against Ted Cruz. And the same is true. We've got to set this stuff aside and do what's best for the babies and what's best for the advancement of the sanctity of human life. So that's why I went to the movie. And that's why after the movie, I've decided to endorse the movie. So what I want to do today, I'm going to give you a short, if you will, kind of review. And if you're listening to the sound of my voice on these radio stations and Salem radio and on my social media platforms, I exhort you to go see the movie. Despite what your issues might be with Abby Johnson, who's a very outspoken critic of many of us in the pro-life movement, Despite all of that, set it aside and go see the movie. Support the movie. I think it's worth seeing. So here's why. I'm going to give you a couple of pros and a couple of cons. A couple of things that would support the movie, the reason why to go see the movie, 
And then maybe a few things that I point out that aren't so good about the movie that, you know, I think we need to be aware of. But overall, I heartily support the movie and would exhort you to go see it as soon as possible. Here's number one, one of the pros of going to see Unplanned. I want you to plan to go see Unplanned, okay? So number one, Unplanned shows the gruesome and painful reality of abortion. Unplanned shows the gruesome and painful reality of abortion. Unlike a lot of other pro-life movies that have been released over the last decade or whatever, there isn't much about what abortion is and does. Uh, even the Gosnell movie that was released last year about the serial killer Kermit Gosnell that was busted for snipping the necks of born children and now sits in prison. Even that movie didn't show the reality of what that guy was doing at all. And the rationale was that uh, they wanted, the producers of that movie wanted it to be, get a PG rating. And because of that, they covered up the reality of abortion. Now they did tell people at the end of the movie, you could go watch it by going to the website. Uh, but let me ask you this: What person in their in their uh, you know would 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 think about going to a movie about abortion and not expect to see it at some level? I mean, it kind of goes part and parcel with it, right? So this movie, thankfully, shows the gruesome reality of abortion. There are two scenes: uh, one where Abby Johnson's been called into the POC room, which is the product of conception room. That's what they call it where the abortion is uh, being undertaken. And she's called upon to do an ultrasound of the baby and watches the baby being sucked into the cannula. It's very, very hard to watch, very, very gripping scene. And it's early on in the movie. Uh, and that really sets the stage. That's the thing that turned Abby Johnson against abortion. That one moment where she was called into the POC room. So, Unplanned shows the gruesome reality of abortion. That's number one. Number two, Unplanned shows Abby Johnson being converted by witnessing an actual abortion. Now, for us, it's kind of hard to imagine someone working at a Planned Parenthood for eight years and never seen an abortion. But uh, if, you believe, if you believe the movie, you believe her story, she actually didn't see one until she actually had to participate in the abortion procedure itself in one of the POC rooms. So it shows her in that room witnessing an abortion. And that's what changes her mind. That's what changes her mind. And I think that's, that's huge. Considering also that Abby Johnson's not an advocate of using abortion victim photography and video uh, in the public square, mostly in front of abortion clinics. She objects to that. And I know there's arguments on one, on both sides of that. I get it. But we at Created Equal advocate for the use of abortion victim photography almost everywhere. We believe the public needs to see it, whether it's in front of an abortion clinic, where it's on a college campus, high school campus, on an overpass, on a tow banner, on a billboard tray. It doesn't matter. America needs to see abortion. And so it's ironic in a way that Abby Johnson was converted by actually seeing an abortion. Now, it was an actual abortion taking place of course, rather than different than say an abortion victim uh, picture, but that's what converted her. And so it, it, it's somewhat ironic that that's what happened, even though she disagrees with pro-lifers like myself who use abortion victims all the time. Number three, Unplanned exposes Planned Parenthood as a diabolical and evil organization. Doesn't sugarcoat what Planned Parenthood does. In fact, the woman who plays the medical director at Planned Parenthood is the perfect representation, in my opinion, of Cecile Richards. I mean, although Cecile Richards has stepped down as the president of Planned Parenthood, she does, I mean, she doesn't really look like her, but she behaves like her. She looks mean and nasty. She, you know, she fits the, the, the picture. I mean, <laughs> exactly. And, um, and as far as them being an evil organization, the movie is about how Planned Parenthood sells abortion, how they r ramped up uh, their uh, abortion uh, tally, you know, their percent. In fact, there's a scene in the movie where the medical director is talking about the expansion of an abortion clinic in Houston, one of these mega centers. Abby Johnson uh, 
objects to the idea that Planned Parenthood should be doing uh, primarily be about uh, performing abortions and should be about medical uh, women's health and so forth. And it just shows that uh, Planned Parenthood is about abortion, which is the truth, and that they're an evil, awful organization. So it doesn't sugarcoat who Planned Parenthood is. Uh, number four, un uh, Unplanned, the movie Unplanned, sheds light into Abby's own painful abortion experience, including a medical abortion, chemical abortion. Uh, Abby Johnson apparently had two abortions. One was a surgical abortion, I think when she was in college or right at, thereafter, after she graduated. And then the other was a chemical abortion. And, and they show uh, her taking, you know, the, uh, the abortion, the chemical abortion, and then writhing in pain for days in her in her in her uh in her apartment what have you it's a horrifying scene in the movie uh it just shows that chemical abortions are just as awful as surgical abortions uh, obviously they kill a baby but what it puts a woman through uh is something that most americans don't know and so this shows what her own experience about abortion was in the movie and I think that obviously played a part in her own coming out of the industry. Um, the other thing is this, number five, unplanned demonstrates that some of the PP workers, Planned Parenthood workers, are not necessarily hardcore abortion advocates. Often we think that everybody that works for Planned Parenthood, from the directors, from the president, to the workers, to the you know technicians and the nurses, are all just rabid pro-abortion advocates and they're child killers. Well, the movie portrays them differently. Not all of them that way. In fact, many of them, it just looks like they are they want a job. I think that's true probably uh, when it comes to, we've been in front of abortion clinics for many, many years and it's true. Some people are just there because they want a job. They might believe in women's rights, uh, yeah, women's health care, so to speak, but they're not there because they're child killers per se, not all of them anyway. And I think that was interesting to do to bring that out. Uh, number six, Unplanned the movie depicts a, that a prayerful and winsome witness at abortion facilities are most effective. Uh, throughout the movie, 40 Days for Life, Sean Carney is played in the movie, uh, who's the 40 Days of Our Life president currently. Uh, it, it, it demonstrates that the prayerful, winsome uh, witness at abortion facilities is the one that is the most effective in reaching uh, women who are thinking about abortion, considering that, or vulnerable to abortion, and the workers. And so this relationship develops throughout the movie with Abby Johnson and Sean Carney's wife uh, over the time. And it just shows how that kind of uh, care and love towards Abby Johnson at least apparently had something to do with her leaving the abortion industry. And if you, towards the end of the movie, when she leaves, she goes to 40, the 40 Days for Life office and talks to them. So I think that um, it does a good job in, in demonstrating the majority of what the pro-life movement does is very winsome and, and, and kind, right? As we reach out to people that disagree with us. Uh, number seven, unplanned the movie, shows that the love the love and the long suffering of her parents and others her husband included uh who never stopped praying for her uh that she would leave the uh abortion industry and so throughout the movie you can tell that abby johnson's parents don't approve of what she does at planned parenthood even her husband doesn't approve but yet marries her uh and 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 basically uh, they, they, none of them approve of it at all, apparently, throughout her eight years there. Yet they were very patient, kind, loving, uh, and but firm, and that that shows how we should all be, right? Uh, there are people that uh, that we know that support abortion. You know, they may not work for Planned Parenthood, but they're abortion advocates. They support abortion, what have you. Well. There's no, we're not given a license to be unkind to them just because they disagree with us. Uh, we can be civil. We can be uh, fair, kind uh, to people that disagree with us. In fact, we should. We're commanded to uh, in scripture, of course. And so that comes out in the movie. And I think it's a very powerful uh, part of the movie where Abby 
quits, calls her parents, and of course they're relieved that it's over, and so is her husband. So uh, that those are all the pros of of the movie Unplanned. Let's get to a one of the, the really the main con, you know, the thing I would say that is not uh, accurate or in, maybe inappropriate. You might want to say, and that is the first couple minutes of the show uh, of the movie shows Abby Johnson going into uh, the abortion uh, mill, the Planned Parenthood there, and she's sidewalk count, or, or I'm sorry, she's a, she's a, a, a clinic escort, which by the way, is kind of odd. She doesn't get any training. I don't know if that's the case. I, I assume they get some kind of training, but she doesn't get any training. She's thrown right out there on the sidewalk uh, or on the parking lot, and she's you know, trying to whisk women inside and through the protesters or what, trying to get them inside for their abortion. And it shows uh, a group of protesters yelling and screaming, including the Grim Reaper, okay? Somebody with an abortion victim sign. And then, of course, a middle-aged or older man screaming uh, and yelling judgmental uh, epithets at her, right? Using scripture and such. And, you know, honestly, I'm just thinking about this and I'm thinking, what was the point of that, right? I mean, what's the point of that? I've been doing this for 25 years. I mean, I can count on one hand. I, I've never seen the Grim Reaper out in front of an abortion mill. I mean, maybe he's done it. Maybe there, I mean, maybe there's been somebody that wears a costume like that. Maybe, maybe, and maybe that happened to Abby. It's possible, right? Uh, I, I've had people that use scripture out front of an abortion mill. I don't think that's inappropriate at all, necessarily. Depends on how you're presenting it. If you're doing it in judgment, uh, and calling people names and so forth. That's not appropriate. But I, I just wonder, what's the point? I, I'm afraid that she had an ax to grind against people who use victim photography, use scripture out front. There is nothing wrong, folks, with protesting an abortion, okay? Sidewalk so counseling, prayerful witness are all important, but there's nothing wrong with using signs out front. Sometimes you have to pro project your voice too, but we need to be kind and winsome. And I just think, it, was in a, it, it, it wasn't necessary. Uh, it just didn't add to the movie. And the thing is, they were gone after that first scene. The rest of the movie was about 40 days for life. So I, I just, I wonder if, they, you know, she just wanted to make a point that don't do this, which, okay, that's fine. Uh, but, I mean, she lumped in the use of victim photos. There was one guy holding the abortion victim photo in the protesters. And I'm thinking, if she would just see how we use abortion victim photography out front of an abortion clinic, she would not characterize us that way. That's just not how the people I know in our organization, that's not how we do it. We use a victim photos, but we don't yell at people. We don't uh, scream. We're not judgmental, right? We don't dress up in the Grim Reaper, you know? And so I just think it was un unnecessary, inappropriate, and it plays into this stereotype that those who use scripture and abortion victim photography are mean-spirited and judgmental. And I just don't know if that, I, do, I don't believe that's the case for the most part. But anyway, that's really the only main issue I had with the movie. Uh, coming from where uh, Abby Johnson is from and where she believes on that, I, I'm not surprised. I just don't think it added anything to the movie at all. Now, let me move on. Just a couple of short observations really fast. And again, I, I tell you, go see this movie. It's worth seeing. Definitely worth seeing. And I'm glad that, you know, we're, we're hopefully turning the corner when we make the, if these movies are going to continue to be produced about abortion, that they be truthful and they show the reality. Gosnell was close, but this movie is the farthest has, that has ever been gone, in my opinion. As far as a movie, a Hollywood type movie, you know, that's out in the theaters that shows the reality of abortion. And I think that's good. So let me rattle off a few of these in the, in the minutes we have left of the program here today. So unplanned, all these things that I said, you know, the pros, lots of pros, one con, one thing I'd say that uh, wasn't necessary. And I'd say actually was inappropriate and, and stereotyping lots of people who go to abortion centers using victim photography. But other than that, there's a couple other quick uh, uh, observations. Uh, you know, a lot of these movies that are made by uh, or for Christian audiences, let's say, uh, the acting generally is subpar for the most part. 
Uh, they're kind of sappy, you know what I mean? They're just, yeah, just a little bit uh, below level professional, a little bit cheesy, you know? There's nothing wrong with that, but I'm not a big fan of any of these movies necessarily because they preach to the choir. But this one was a little bit different in that I think the acting was, uh, was pretty good. The woman who played Abby Johnson did a great job. The woman who played the uh, Planned Parenthood director did, a, did an awesome job as well. So the acting's good enough. The cinema's good. The filming, you know, all of it. It's done done quite well. In fact, it's it's probably the best, quote unquote, movie of its genre. That is that it appeals to Christian audiences that I've ever seen. I think the R rating helped the movie. A lot of, there was a lot of controversy when it didn't get a PG rating like Gosnell did. Now, Gosnell did certain things to come underneath the PG rating, and they, they, they purposely did not show victim photography or video at all in the movie. They didn't show an abortion, didn't show the baby's uh, neck snipped, none of that. But this movie did. And because of it, it got an R rating. I think it deserves an R rating. There's no language or any kind of inappropriate, uh, you know, sexual uh, stuff. There was none of that. But it was because of the abortions that were shown in the movie, you know. And I think it's appropriate that a, a movie about abortion ought to be R, R rated. I mean, abortions are rated, right? I mean, it's awful. It's horrible. I mean, if you went to see a, a movie about a serial killer, you would expect it to be R-rated. That's why I thought Costnell uh, underserved the audience by not showing abortion. But it was an R-rated movie. It didn't hurt it at the box office. You know, apparently it's grossed over $6 million just this weekend. One of the top grossing films currently. Uh, and has opened up now in 700 additional theaters uh, this week. So... It's, it's popular. The R rating isn't keeping people away like the producers of Gosnell thought it would. Um, unplanned shows Christians praying. And this is, this is just it's a minor thing, but it, it's, you know, people need to understand it's not appropriate, in my opinion, not biblical. Unplanned shows Christians praying for aborted children. I know people do this. Mostly they're Catholic. Uh, okay, fine. If that's what you want to do. But the Bible is very clear. Hebrews 9.27 that says, we're appointed once to die and then comes the judgment. Once a person is dead, whether they're born or unborn, the judgments occur. I mean, they're with the Lord or they're not. Uh, there's no way to pray somebody into heaven once they're dead. Right? And so that that's just one minor thing. And then a, a small thing, but yet, it, it, again, it's not accurate, uh, unfortunately. And that is the barrels that are being hauled away as medical waste, you, the containers, that is, are not the type of containers that are used uh, by medical waste companies. They're not. They're usually cardboard boxes that say bio waste on the side. They have to be uh, by law. Or they can be red tubs that are also noted as bio waste. They use 255-gallon fuel drums, uh, which are not what they use to haul away aborted babies from abortion mills. It, it's not a big deal, but it's just somebody like myself who knows this stuff in and out. Uh, this was just not accurate. It was inaccurate. So they pray for the aborted children. I'm probably going to hear from people saying, oh, what's wrong with that? Obviously, we want aborted children born. Or, I mean, when, people who die should be treated humanely. I get that, obviously. That's why we're for a bill that uh, would allow for cremation or uh, internment, burial of aborted children, right? Uh, but anyway, so they pray for the children uh, once they're dead and the containers are not accurate. They're, it's a fuel drum and not a bio waste box. Minor thing, but uh, unplanned seems to be an attempt to portray, and again, I'm glad that they portrayed the Planned Parenthood workers as not rabid pro-abortion advocates because some of them aren't. But I wonder if uh, it's it's a, a, an attempt to paint them as victims themselves and uh, and not uh, as what they are. Many of them, and that is they support uh, killing. So I don't I don't know about that. I mean, um, anyway. Let's see here. Um, uh, it was interesting to close out here, <laughs> just to close out the program. Uh, there were some interesting cameos in the movie. Lila Rose uh, is one of the reporters who's uh, the president of live action. She makes a cameo appearance. Uh, Dr. Le Anthony Levitino also 
is uh, uh, he's the abortionist. Dr. Levitino is a former abortionist, uh, an appropriate uh, screencast for him to be the abortionist. And then my guy, the, 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 the pillow, my pillow guy, <laughs> Michael Lindell is in the movie, which is interesting. He must have given a lot of money or something. I don't know. I like him. He's, he's the my pillow guy on TV. Anyway, that's uh, that's my wrap up of the unplanned movie. I exhort you to go see it. I endorse the movie. So go see Unplanned when you can. Support this movie. Uh, we'll see you next time. God bless you. God bless America. And remember America to bless God. You've been listening to Mark Harrington, your radio activist. For more information on how to become a witness against the evil, evil plague in America, call Created Equal at 614-269-7808, 614-269-7808, or go online to createdequal.net, createdequal.net. Be sure to tune to The Mark Harrington Show next time for your marching orders in the culture war.